Hello, I'm Margie Minnie. I play Walter White Jr. And I'm Peter Gould. I am co-executive producer, and I, I wrote this one. Hi, I'm Bob Odenkirk. I play Saul Goodman. I'm Vince Gilligan, executive producer. Michelle McLaren, executive producer. Brian Cranston, playing Walt, and I directed this episode. Wow, so far it's like born identity. I know, isn't it? Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Anna. Oh, thank you, Bob. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm Anna Gunn. I play Skylar. And I'm Melissa Bernstein, co-executive producer. Well, that was a challenge. That was some cool Just stuff, getting through the, the skateboarding. Yeah. Success. Yeah, Those kids yeah. were good, huh? We're missing some pretty... This is the first thing that people will see in the new season. Yeah. Really? And that's their, the real backyard swimming pool at, uh, at what the, the faux White House. Heck, and Walter White's evil school? twin. What's could it this? be? And, and Brian, there was some uh, quite a bit of research we did in debating about whether we could actually do that skateboarding. Yeah. Uh, normally, you're thinking skateboarding in an empty pool where it's uh, gunite and plaster, and it, that this is not the case. They had a, a, um, a sti- no, fiberglass, shell. fiberglass yeah, yeah, shell yeah. that was placed in there, and it, it and the angles of the walls didn't lend themselves to, to doing many tricks or being very safe, and so we had to do several uh, audition processes through that and to find the right guys to be able to do it, and it was tough. It was it was tough to find, and and we were worried about damaging the, the pool, and we'd have to pay them for a brand new pool if we did so. And it was like, oh my god, <laughs> starting off with a bang with our last eight. And working with our homeowners that we've been working with since the pilot, and having them allow us to take their house to this. Fran and Lewis have been uh, champions from the very beginning. And there was a very confused uh, uh, delivery guy who thought that something terrible had happened. That's right. This house. The Culligan guy showed That's up. That's right. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Thought, didn't realize it was a, a sat and thought uh, something yeah. terrible had happened. Now, this is in our real house on our stage. Uh, and, and the great art department had to come in, take what was pristine and nice, and ruin it and just beat the hell out of it. Uh, but in such a way that it could be put back because then you guys had to put it back within a day or two. We had, yeah. we had, uh, this was first up, I think we. We scheduled this to shoot this right away, and so they can get back and, and put it all back in place. Uh, you guys haven't commented on this, but as a viewer of this show, this feels like you really don't know where you are. You yeah. know, I mean, you know you're in the house, yeah. but it's like, is it years later? Right, right. I mean, when I read this, oh, yeah. I remember thinking, picturing it and thinking, so what? Yeah. Is it 10 years later? I mean, yeah. I... It just, you're in such a n- different world and you don't know what happened. It's amazing. It's, yeah. a, it's amazing. It's when I tell people about this final eight and how great it's going to be and surprising it's going to be. I think about this part of the story, which. Hmm. Yeah. I wanted to give a, a shout out to Tristan Chavez, one of our crew members who was actually in that uh, sequence with the skateboarders. And he helped uh, shoot some of the, the material. On a, on a video cam. That's what he was actually in that shot. Yeah. He was actually shooting. Yeah. And he's got a big BRBA on his on his buttock now. <laughs> <laughs> big tattoo. This is an awesome awesome shot, party. Brian. I love this shot. Yeah, it's great. Isn't that awesome? Look at it's like Cyclops. It's like his he. What I loved about it from a standpoint of a story is that he he lost sight of who he was. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I didn't think of it that way. This lady did a great job. Yeah. Uh, What's her name? Hello, Carol. Cheryl Ford Menti. Cheryl. Cheryl did a great job. Cheryl played Carol. And uh, (laughs) And Brian, I remember watching you work with her on that bag, how to drop it exactly (laughs) so that the oranges would fall out. Fall forward. Yes. Yeah, there was a way to to hold that in order to ensure that. And you didn't want to see that she was forcing it down. Yeah. It had to slip through her fingers. Nice job. Got a good uh, squeeze song over this.
I like the little glimpse you can see of Skylar and Walt's wedding picture up there on the left. <laughs> Which is, uh, uh, it looks like you were in a fez. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not the best Photoshop <laughs> job ever. Uh, happy days. <laughs> and we debated, I'm not being funny here, we debated long and hard uh, in the music and sound effects spotting session whether we should hear a flush here. <laughs> Do you remember that, uh, Peter? Yeah, well, was he, the, he, yeah. Could, he could have had the Archie Bunker entrance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Because we, we weren't even be funny, like, you know, are people going to say, E.G., why didn't he flush? Or are they going to laugh when they hear the flush? Or it's like, we decided to go without. You're going to get a lot of letters from I'm that. Glad, I'm glad you didn't, because it wasn't... When he sat down on that throne, he forgot what his business was when he found the book. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, well, so maybe he does the business a little bit later yeah. in yeah. the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He shots bag. himself. Poor yeah. Marie. <gasps> and this is, this is exactly the shot that we had of Walt just a few moments ago. What, a, what an interesting visual echo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brian, you really did a hell of a job directing this episode. Thank you. Yeah. This is great so far. I haven't heard a thing, but... Looks great. <laughs> <laughs> and only, really? what, 30 degrees colder than it was? That's yeah, this... this right. So we, we actually that. shot this on stage. This was on this stage. This on stage, yeah. yeah. Right. Where we had to... Conv we have a very small area that we could actually shoot a, t a little bit on stage. And uh, and then we had to watch our angles. So the angles from Dean's standpoint is all down, and that allowed us to shoot on stage. But one of the things I wanted to make sure that, that Walt had the baby in his hands when he was being... But well, that's the real place. That's the real place there, and it, yeah. And it was cold. There, you see the, <laughs> yes, you could see the condensation coming in. I remember so. listening, Anna, uh, I remember being on the, the headphones and listening to your, uh, <laughs> listening to you, uh, and you, you were saying inside, okay, I'm very warm. I'm warm. I'm so warm. It's so hot. <laughs> it's so very hot. Very hot. I loved hearing you psych yourself up Look like that. Look how cute that baby is. Oh, look. This, this, watch. This yeah. baby's oh, yes. amazing. Oh, it's bye-bye. Yes. Uh, <laughs> most kids smile? would look at the camera that's yeah. behind Hank's head. Yeah. Yeah. She just follows the action. And you'll see a lot more of her in the rest of the season. Yeah. But Baby see, Mo. not so good there. I'm like, oh, it's so cold. I'm going to cross my arms. <laughs> and so now very a little, cold. A little call forward. Yeah. yeah Carol. Here's Carol. That was a good touch. And that was, that was, <laughs> a, and that was your idea, Brian. I thought it was great. Yeah, that was a good touch. Yeah. That was, uh, yeah, that was not in the script. Okay. Yeah. Your stomach okay? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah so you being, uh, you, you, these guys are being pulled by a truck here? Is that... Uh, are they on a trailer? Yeah, yeah, this is a process trailer. So there are cops all around us, ahead of yeah. us, beside us. And uh, one of the challenges is not to see the police presence in the rear window. And the difficulty is um, the height. So this is an SUV. We had to put the, the truck, uh, the SUV, on a trailer that's being pulled by a truck. But then it would create too much height. I don't know, we had a lot of discussions about this. And so we had to put it on there and then deflate the tires oh, to, yeah? to bring the, yep. the, the oh height gosh. of it down to what is more acceptable. That, yeah. Just those couple of inches of letting the air yeah. out of the tires. Make a huge difference. difference yeah. I love those shots. Yeah, that's a great <laughs> shot. Again, we had a Go, GoPro in that mailbox hidden. Yeah. And then that's a great Hank's shot. POV, I wanted it to be just wildly out of focus. We use that camera. It, it's a it, it cuts in for a couple seconds here and there. It cuts in just fine, and it and it costs so little that you can put it in risky shots like that and 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 risk getting it destroyed. This is the GoPro. It's about the size of a cigarette pack. It's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You can throw them off of a roof. Yeah. All for nothing. We can't do that. That shot was important because we had to establish that they did go to the hospital after this, and so he is removing any remnants of that. Yeah. Yeah, that close-up really told you everything you needed it to did. know. It was very right nicely there. done. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Told you he had been at the hospital. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. H Hank! Yeah, in the original, uh, I think the original we broke this, there was a lot more medical stuff. Yeah. And it was nice to, it's, it's nice to get the story moving here because you want to see what Hank's going to see. Well, you actually wrote the scene. There was a scene, uh, he, he has his panic attack, and then you cut to 20 minutes later and the, and the ambulance arrives, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we figured we didn't need it. Uh-oh. And he's, he, I think here he is. He's kind of hoping that isn't true yeah. still. And that's so much of what we're tracking in this episode is Hank's uh, thought process and his, his emotion 
as he as he kind of assimilates this and realizes what's really going on and knows because he so guts. doesn't want it to be true. No. Absolutely, you're right. That would be a bad feeling. Yeah, we get a lot of use out of this garage in this episode. Yeah, the, this, this is a real garage, the right? Practical mm-hmm. garage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and you had to shoot a lot of um, uh, night for day in that garage, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah, again, we're shooting in the winter season, so we didn't have a lot of time, so had to shut it down and just pound lights through the outside windows. I love what you do with your foot here, Brian. What, my foot? Watch. Yeah, that's nice. That. That's so great. That's nice, yeah. He's all like jazzed because she said she's, good morning. I know, she said good morning. Yeah. We have hope. <laughs> there it's... It's so much fun to see this little hopeful moment in their relationship, mm-hmm. you know, that, that uh, you know, if Hank hadn't found that book, this could have all worked yeah. out pretty nicely. Yeah. Their costumes coordinated. That's yes. right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not an accident. You guys, I mean, we talked about that. We think a lot about it. Thinking about pulling these characters together as if they're on the same wavelength. Yeah. And I got to tell you, Jennifer Bryant, our uh, costume designer, yeah. her department, her crew, does a wonderful job. Terrific job. Comes up with great ideas. Mm-hmm. As did Kathleen DeToro mm-hmm. before her. They're really, we've been blessed with really wonderful uh, folks who really know their jobs. This is, for me, this was always a return to Sweater Walt. There was that moment in season two, I think it was, where he, he suddenly we cut forward and there was Walt in the uh, in the sweater. In his pink and, sweater? In his pink sweater. And this is this is kind of the return. Anytime a character from a from my standpoint has a sweater on, it softens the look. Mm-hmm. And anytime you have a, a crew neck shaped sweater as opposed to a V neck, it softens it even more. Yeah. So you take those angles away from it and it I'll think about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. That's that's it softens. That's softens that's interesting, yeah. It was really cold that day too. <laughs> cold that day. <laughs> You'd never know it. Uh-oh. I'm happy about the cold though. I'm I have layers in every scene. That's true. We put you in a lot of layers. I this love this reveal of Lydia. Yeah. This is great. just so nice. With her sunglasses. Yeah. And then seeing your reflection. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a great shot. Right? How do you get both of you in the same frame? That's what I'm you're the uh, you're a tall drink of water there, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wanted to be able to not know who it was until the very last moment. That was the whole goal of that. Yeah, it's a great reveal. 68%. And we had a lot of discussion about how much to explain to the audience about how Walt left things with the, all these underworld folks. And this is, uh, we, so it's like the, uh, it's like the iceberg. We just see the little tip of what he, uh, of what he, what he left, how he left it. Yeah. This is her problem, not his. He's certainly not pleased to see her there. This is your real beard, right? Yeah. Because uh, something we didn't talk about in the in the teaser, you got the hair and the full beard, and that was all wonderfully done makeup and, and hair uh, wig and uh, fake beard stuff. And prosthetic makeup. Pros- prosthetic makeup. Uh, well, no, 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 it wasn't. No, it was real. Uh, that was, no, wait, yeah, wait, that no, was wait, real. That's yeah. right. Okay, that was your real hair. Yeah. yeah, and that's another reason why we shot it first. That's right, right. that's we right. shoot all that first, and then I shaved my head and shaved down the beard to a... A Van Dyke. That's but you, right. you did have prosthetics on there, your neck. Yeah. The, and cheeks and stuff for prosthetics. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I have a little bit of turkey neck, but not that much. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. <laughs> and, but, but, but then later on, because everyone listening to this is, is no doubt seeing all the episodes, uh, later on, you've got, you do have a wig and a fake beard on. Mm-hmm. It's amazing how they, they, they cut together like. And you know, nylons and high heels. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> well, we had, and we had different stages of, of uh, wigs and beards in the, in the season because of uh, certain flashbacks. Yeah. I like this, this coming up here, Peter. It was really wonderful, a nice little twist. He's so used to lying that he's, we're, we're expecting him to here. Yeah. And he's just, he's turning over a new leaf. It's all going to be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> She's a former business associate who wants me to go back. Now we're starting to watch the scene. This is the, the deadly thing on these commentaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so you good. get sucked in. <laughs> well, I, this, is, uh, this is the third and last episode that I've directed on, uh, on Breaking Bad. And, but the first time that I've actually had the writer with me and uh, I was very okay. grateful to be able to have another set of eyes because yeah. Vince usually writes that first episode of the right. season and, and he can't be out in Albuquerque. He has to stay in, okay. at the writer's room in Burbank. 
and, to and, break the other stories. Right. And just to explain, when Brian yeah. does direct, Brian has to direct the first episode of the season because a director has to prep, and it's the only time where you're not shooting. So um, that's that's... You know, we don't have an option there. Yeah. And, and it's, of course, a nice episode to drag. I, I love this moment with you, Anna. That's, That's a great where, chat. Where, yeah. where Skylar just, you know, reads this lady the ride. And then you do feel the height difference between these two. I know. <laughs> it's just, it's, <laughs> I know. But he's like, I'm, okay, I'll be leaving now. Yeah, you really <laughs> gave her what for there. I'm get out. Delbert McClinton. I love his T-shirt there. <laughs> Delbert McClinton's yeah. awesome. Yeah, let's stay out of there There's a lot of decisions that are made. In every single uh, pre-production and production, for instance, there was a, se a scene that was cut from the the final uh, version of this episode of, of Marie waking up and discovering that Hank was not in bed with her. And it was a nice little moment, um, but ultimately we felt that this would tell the story as well. And You have to make these tough decisions. Even though it was written well, it would take two, three hours... Uh, production time and do we have that time? It's a constant battle. It is, it is. and I think in this case we, we put it on as a target of opportunity and, and we're pretty much knowing that we weren't going to get to shoot it, but just, just in case. Well, I, I believe it was the same day that we were shooting the final scene of the episode, which yeah. is a barn burner. Yeah, yeah. indeed. And so when, when you use that term, and I think it's appropriate, target of opportunity, it's pushed to the end of the schedule. And if there, if we have an unbelievably quick day, and he, we're able to get to it, then let's shoot it. If yeah. not, then we can. We, we have, have to, Plan B. We have to let it go. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, one of the things I really enjoyed about this is how we get these little glimpses of uh, moments from all the seasons. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the characters come rushing back. This is very well put together. Very well shot, very well edited by Kelly yeah. Dixon. And we got to use Word Mule. Yeah, yeah it's by Jim sound. White. Jim White, who I went to NYU with, uh, who's a wonderful, very talented uh, composer and musician. And I, we finally got a Jim White song on very the show. Very good. It's a great song. He's, he's, if you don't know Jim White, go to do yourself a favor and, and uh, get some of his music. He's great. Check him out. Now, a lot of, uh, these shots here were done back on, on the stage. It was one of those that we had to, we had to take it all with us and, and do it back on the stage because we just didn't want to take the time at the practical location to shoot that when we had limited daylight and I'm not so. No, and I think some of this was shot night for day, so it's actually night out the windows and, and Michael bounced light off the hillside, didn't he? To, to make to it some, look like to daylight? Make it look like, yeah. yeah, he was able wow. to get some of these, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Those are the days. Did you, so none of these uh, had to be recreated? These are all, uh, most of these photos from past episodes and whatnot? And including that video from uh, uh, season two? Season, season one. one. Season, season one. Uh, 106. Uh, and we, also so. Also a Peter Gould episode. That's right. My first one. I, yeah. This would be a great. It would be a great project for one of the fans to take this scene and go frame by frame and figure out what, what each thing is. Yeah. This is one. This, and, that is wonderful. And Mark Hansen's team, prop team, did a great job. Yeah, they did. All those to go back and and, and, and then they've kept them. You know, they kept them all filed neatly away and. Okay. They know better. <laughs> <laughs> this is a scene that is a personal favorite of Peter Gould's. Uh, I love this one, too. You know, it wrote uh, this beautiful monologue about <laughs> these guys debating the merits of, uh, of Star Trek. And, uh, and with such fervor and absolute commitment to it. And it gave a wonderful juxtaposition between uh, Jesse's mood and where his head is at. And it just just works so well and and i gotta show you guys the praise again uh for those of us who read this and are able to either act or direct these um it's basically don't get in the way it's like this plays out so beautifully mm -hmm. and when you read it it comes to mind and michelle will concur with this you kind of see where you want the camera anyway as you're huh. reading this uh as a viewer as an uh, appreciator of the of the written word that's cool it, you, you guys write very visually and it, it, it inspires us visually and how to shoot it and that's a really 
That you feel very fortunate to direct these scripts. Yeah, it's really great. And that that shot, we talked about that background a lot, and what we can have, and what's public domain, and what is going to cost us a fortune. And and I was just saying, I just want his brain matter just yeah. mixing in. That's great. Behind That's great. him at any given time, and it keeps changing. And Jason from our props department ultimately created that for us. Yeah. Oh, he did? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. It's terrific. It's great. I love how you got, I just, I'm noticing it for the first time, or I'm really paying attention to it for the first time, the fact that you put uh, uh, Charles Baker on the floor instead of on the on the futon there. He's sitting all the way, his butt on the floor. I think yeah. it's, it's interesting. Why, why was that, do you think? I just, I love the, the foreground of it. And we had him sitting on the couch before. That's and, right, yeah. And he sat down on the couch. And, you know, sitting on the couch is okay, but it just didn't, I don't know, it just didn't, I love this shot. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that, it's a great yeah. shot. All that stuff in the foreground, close to him. Yeah, and then in the background, too, the futon. Yeah. Yeah. It was so much fun to watch you guys rehearse this because I, I think, Brian, you, you have such great comedy chops. And you know you were able to get all these little, uh, these little comedy beats with these these uh, these these terrific actors, and it was it was just uh, it was a, it was a really different kind of scene to work on for Breaking Bad. It was fun. <laughs> and Skinny Pete, such a good audience. He is. I love it when he clutches the pillow. <laughs> He's the audience you want for your pitch. For Matt, your Jones, episode. Matt Jones, Charlie Baker did a terrific job, and have for all the time we've been on the air. You got some great faces in this here, This is too. fun, too. Yeah. Saul, uh, Mr. Odenkirk, uh, your character has some interesting clientele. He does. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he knew that Jesse was sitting out there. I know. love that reveal of Lavelle. <laughs> <too. laughs> <laughs> 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 Lavelle not well, to let him Well, have. Bob, you know, at this point, Saul has <laughs> all this money <laughs> from, yeah. all, has all this money. Why do you think he's still seeing clients? Uh, That's a good question. To keep up appearances, he wants to keep that <laughs> money. That makes sense. So this, this is, is almost like a score. money laundry now. In a way, yeah. 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 Just sit on it for a little while and then it's yours. Yeah. <laughs> this was a lot of discussion. We had to completely make sure that he was a, a marijuana cigarette coming out of the outside of the package. All right. And we had to get it close up and make sure that it wasn't misconstrued <laughs> as a normal cigarette. I love Tina. I know. Tina's yeah. great. You know you can't smoke that up in here. Tina Parker's great. Tina and Lavelle are great together. <laughs> now, um, Vince, we we had to do some visual effects here, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, add a little smoke. smoke. Yeah. Uh, There's a little smoke needed to be added. Oh, I right? think that sh- I think that shot. There or this one. Yeah. You know, the good news is I can't tell you which ones are which. But uh, I think that, that. One, yeah. <laughs> Just to make the smoke all match. Yeah. That was all real, though. That was, this is all real. Pull up a bong and take a seat. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Barn door open. Did you get your tuggy interrupted? Is that what <laughs> <laughs> We had fun. Uh, that was the phrase for a, a number of weeks. Barn door open, no matter what we were doing. It's, she it's, was great. It's based on something my wife sometimes says to me. <laughs> <laughs> she says, did you lock the office door? Quiet on this end. You're great in this scene, Bob. This is oh, thank this you, is man. a great scene. I haven't seen it yet. This is it. You're watching for the first time. That's right. What's it like? What's it like watching yourself, Bob? <laughs> I'll tell you what's difficult is Bob and Bob did a great guy? job. Actually, matching dressing and tying a tie and doing dialogue and that's that's not easy. The actor's really greatest isn't. challenge. It's, it's a challenge. <laughs> Olivier, like, shocking colors. Refuse to have ties. <laughs> only snap-ons. For <laughs> Velcro shoes. You can only play eight-year-olds <laughs> if there was a suit involved. Why would you? Uh, I love the way Saul talks with his hands. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, you actually don't need to hear what he's saying to know what he's of, thinking. Uh, yeah. Magic going on. <laughs> little distraction from the mouth. <laughs> don't look at the lips. <laughs> and maybe you'll believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did your lips just say? <laughs> but he's actually giving really good advice here. Jesse's about you know, to get himself in some serious trouble. That's true. That's true. Saul always does. Melissa, I'm, I'm, good you, I'm glad you said that because in the history of Saul, Goodman has he has always given good advice. Yeah, right? he does. But it comes out of that mouth, and it's like it can't be. Can't well, be everything, everything, everything except keep cooking meth. Yeah, that yeah. was his good yeah. advice. Right. Good. Okay. He gave that more than once. I guess you're right about that. Come on. 
Well, once you're, you're a criminal, then you might as well stay. <laughs> 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 once you find your skill. Yeah. I, I love that on the wall there, right by your right shoulder, uh, the lowest uh, photo on the wall is a photo of you and Rob Wilson King, the right. original production designer. <laughs> the man who designed this set, yeah. this crazy set, which he said was based on the law offices and he, things he'd seen around town. But I believe the body that um, that Bob's face is photoshopped to is John Tolles. Oh, oh, really? Oh, is that right? John, yeah, this, our cinematographer on the pilot. Yes. Oh, I did not know good that. Call. It's good call. Good <laughs> call. I always enjoy seeing this set because I feel like you, there's there's always a good angle here. There's always there's always something new to see about Saul's That's true. Saul's world. The University of American Samoa. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, my favorite. That is my favorite, too. Oh, God. All those piles of papers. <laughs> I like the picture of Saul Goodman in the balloon fiesta behind yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. We I never... love how you play with your tie there mm -hmm. a minute ago. What did you say, did you say Peter? I, we never did the balloon fiesta. That was yeah, always, we, we always wanted did. to do something yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah, we'd have to have been shooting in October. Oh, and, yeah. I love this, Brian, because it, I feel like he's on an airplane. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's a great reveal yeah. when you figure I out where he is. Uh, I, that was in the script that we didn't want to know until the very end. So it was, uh, it was actually not that difficult to set that up, to be absolutely honest, huh. to be able to know how to shoot that and, and not reveal it until that moment when you go wide. Very long lens, like way back. Yeah, at the end long of the, lens, yeah. really short uh, depth of field, and then end on that shot, nice. which I like. That's actually my favorite photography in the whole episode. That mm -hmm. that that sequence yeah. there, and it's right. That was just shot in the entry hall to our uh, our offices. production offices. Yeah, yeah. here's very the, cost effective. <laughs> <laughs> that's a real. That's not added that's, in digitally. That's a real. It's a real roach, babe. Yeah. And it wow. performed so well, uh, unbelievably. Yeah. It was like yeah. <laughs> Whenever you see something happen that's magic like that, and you get it in the, fr I think that was the second take, or something, and it was done, and now, this. This is a great scene. I, I, my hand is off to you, my friend, because directing is is hard, and mm -hmm. I have never acted, and I've never had to direct while acting. I don't know Whoa. how you do a scene this good while you're also acting in it. Well, you start with good writing. That's the right key. Book. And then you have an idea where you want to go. Talk me through this. But I love how you chose to put the bags right between these two guys. Yeah, I, I like that too. I, I would not, I did not see that coming, and it really does work. It works very, very well. It's it's the it's the thing that is the bridge, and the 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 chasm between the two. Yeah, that's good. And still has a point of view about what the lifestyle that Jesse. He's still like a dad. Yeah, he still mm -hmm. has that. Come on, Brian. When you're directing and acting, you know, you take a scene like this, and you're in in the moment, and you're you're looking at Jesse as you're acting. Are you ever thinking in your head what the camera is seeing? Is it hard to to do the both? You know, th there's always a sliver of awareness whether you're doing stage. You have to know where to hit so that you know, you, the light will be on you and. You have to know certain things, and but you, you try to work that out beforehand and then trust it, it's going to be there and let it go. And then, you know, just Do you watch it back? Do you watch takes back? No, we don't no? have playback. Yeah, we don't have that capability, believe it or not. Yeah. I mean, it's an added expense and an added time. And if we did have it, we would have spent many, many times watching yeah. something play well, especially back. Especially if you're directing yourself. It's, yeah. it's a little dangerous in that. So, I agree. Uh, I, I had Nina Jack as my uh, first assistant director and her great team. And uh, Michelle was on there and, and Peter was there. So Melissa. And was Melissa there. was there. Everybody was, you know, willing and there to help uh, keep an eye on things that I can't see from from my perspective while we're shooting. I love how you kept the focus uh, on, on Jesse. It seems counterintuitive here because uh, you're the one doing all the talking. I, I really like that part. Yeah. I, I thought that was where the story is more mm -hmm. than who's talking. Yeah, that's, that's great. It's yeah, a great, great, great it's, idea. It's amazing how far these two characters have come. That's right. I'm done. 
So you you trust uh, Andy Vogelai and you mm -hmm. trust uh, uh, Michael um, Slovis to tell you if they didn't get it or if something was out of exactly. focus or whatever. And then you know at after each take, I look over and Peter and I would talk, or Michelle and Melissa and anybody who happened to be there with me at the time. Um, is everybody pleased? And and you know basically when you're acting in something that you're also directing, you try to establish and convey a couple points that you need to get and did we get this and this and if we did that's great are you happy with that good and then you okay. confer with the actor to make sure you empower them did did you were you pleased with that someone looking at and then you impart your own points of view like when i told aaron you know let's do it again this time just be better <laughs> <laughs> Try to pretend this has really happened. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I was waiting for something really profound there. <laughs> <laughs> what shirt's he wearing? This I can't. I can't make this one out. Looks like an explosion from the A team or something. I don't know what's going on there. That's probably it. If he was out there. He's looking more and more like Walt too. His hair's getting shorter and shorter. And that's not how you do things. So. He's trying to emulate me. <laughs> that was, by the way, yeah. I think on some level, actually, because that was because uh, Aaron came to us in season one. Was it season four? Yeah. Or five A? No, I think it was four. When he said, "I think, uh, what if I got my hair cut really, really short?" And he was actually thinking, you know, I'm I'm more and more on Mr. White's team, at least at that point. And maybe it makes sense. Next would have been glasses. Yeah, exactly. And a goatee. The one that I brought. When he shows up in Wallabies, then it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> goatee Wallabies at an hmm? Aztec. <laughs> at an Aztec, that's right. <laughs> I miss the Aztec. If he does come Aztec, back, as we speak, is parked over in the Sony lot along with the uh, the uh, camper, the uh, the, the RV. The RV. Is that? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Over in uh, Culver City. Are they for the tour or something or showing? Well, they're keeping it safe. It's parked next to, we got a photo from Dennis Milliken, our our our, uh, our, our head teamster. Uh, he, when he was over there making a delivery, a photo of the two, the Aztec and the Winnebago and the uh, the Bounder, I guess it technically mm -hmm. is, next, parked next to the Ghostbusters uh, ambulance <laughs> and the uh, the Green Hornet uh, car with the machine guns in the nose. <laughs> oh, man. That's yeah, fun. Peterson Auto Museum, here we go. It ought to be. Yeah. It ought to be. I guarantee you'd be the only goddamn Aztec in the Peterson Auto Museum. <laughs> in the Hall of Aztecs. <laughs> in the crappy car wing. In the crappy car Dennis wing. Dennis Milliken is in charge That's of. Right. <laughs> this yeah. this section I, I I wanted to have some focus on on Walt when he's earnestly telling him that I did not kill Mike, and I need you to believe me. How good of, of a liar he's become, and then, and then the look from uh, from Jesse. Mm, that's knowing. a great yeah, look at that. Absolutely right. Because you're both sharing a lie here. You're yeah. both agreeing to yeah not speak the truth exactly. And then finish it off with something like that. Nice. Wonderfully played. I don't know. One of the happiest uh, moments hey, for the White RJ. family. Yeah. It's RJ. I'm, I'm eating. That's, that's surprising. What are you eating? <laughs> well, it's not breakfast. That's the surprise. Um, I think it was steak and something. Do they do a good job making the prop steak there? Yeah, for the most part. I had like three of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's the downside of eating in a scene. <laughs> Is that real wine? Or is that great no. juice? No. Yeah. No real wine. We sound disappointed. It is. <laughs> no, it's not. We're going to talk to Sag about that. <laughs> Sag. That change yes, that rule. right. Must be <laughs> real wine. <laughs> uh -oh. He's hiding stuff from me again. What's he up to? And I like the, the shaky handheld on this because yeah. it, it mirrors how he's feeling. Uh. You know, if you look super duper closely uh, coming up here, although you, you shouldn't be able to tell regardless, even if I point it out, um, you guys uh, forgot to have the water on in the wide shot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, I know. So Bill Pulaski digitally uh, put water 
in the wide well, shot. Well, we got to have Bill do something. <laughs> yes. He's sitting around in his office and, waiting and, for um, He was hoping to do the vomit. Yes. <laughs> Didn't we also uh, put a name on the bottle, on the pill bottle? Oh, yeah. yeah. The close-up on the pill bottle, I think it's already gone past. There's, it was, the, there's the fake water. It was uh, it was Walter, comma, White instead of White, comma, Walter. So we oh, uh, is that digitally right? flipped that around. Oh, yeah. God. You know, it's, I, I, I tell you, it's like heroin. It's like uh, the ability... To fiddle with this stuff, it's it's what yeah. happened to it's, it's what's happened to George Lucas, I guess. Like I want to, I want uh, Greedo to shoot yeah. first. You know, <laughs> you can change all this stuff now, and it's and it's a very hard thing to not want to make use of. I that. love that cut. Yeah. That's a great cut. He can't yeah, find he cut. can't find his highlights magazine. So <laughs> <laughs> Skip, Skip McDonald, yeah. our editor. Walt Whitman. No, actually, uh, Kelly. Kelly. Oh, I'm sorry. Dixon. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Cut. Sorry, Kelly. Kelly Dixon, the wonderful Kelly. Our Dixon. editors, our two editors, uh, alternate uh, each episode, and they both are, are great. And uh, I'd never been on a show that only had two editors. Typically, you have at least three editors, uh, and we started off with three with Lynn Willingham and yeah. uh, and Skip and uh, Kelly, and but then Lynn left us, and we make it work with two, and it's they they work their butts off, but it it works out luckily. Seems like a lot of work for just two. Yeah, yeah. it it is. It is. It, luckily, we have uh, enough uh, lead time, enough or uh, yeah. enough post time to get it done, but just barely. But it also helps too because they're really focused and they know what you guys are that looking is. for always. And well, they have Diane Mercer and Andrew Ortner. Yes, keeping all of those, both those trains on the on the tracks. That's well put. Yep. I love scenes like this where you get into his head. Yeah. We discuss this a lot. It's like, what what makes him go outside? And we just finally settled on something that felt right, and that is just a hunch. Yeah, he spider just sense. Felt something. And then I wanted to have a moment here where he is going, What the hell am I doing outside? Mm hmm. This. Yeah. Mm. And, and you're wearing that the robe, the Sony robe mm. that we've had since the pilot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was the story on that robe? We had who just died a... in that robe? <laughs> who did Somebody it die famous. in that robe? Somebody famous died. Somebody famous died. Somebody famous died. Somebody famous died. This is, and this is so nice. This is all one piece, I think, from here to the end of the act. Yeah. And it's so elegant. I am annoyed by the goddamn license plate, though. Oh, the oh, bands don't point it out. Nobody look. Nobody yes. look. Well, yes. what's wrong with it? Just, I don't know what happened. It's a New Mexican license plate, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, look, look at the plate. It's got the BB. It's got five Whose BB. Whose clever idea was that? I, I don't know, I don't know, but, know I but it's annoying. Yeah, uh -huh. none of us did. Vince, yeah. you and anybody you told caught that. Not yeah. anybody. Yeah. Oh, I guarantee you. Some, oh, what, sure, there'll be some nerd sitting around yeah. going, oh, yeah. I think I saw this thing there. The license plate might indicate something that happens in future episodes. I will figure out those numbers. <laughs> That's very really good. Was that Wally Cox or Jerry Lewis? <laughs> That's a mix. great show. That was very good. This gentleman did a great job. He did. I like his outtake on this. <laughs> you oh, know, yeah. the car broke down. Yeah, the damn car <laughs> broke down on you. <laughs> this, is, this is typical of picture cars. They almost never drive. Yeah. Uh, Wayne DeHart. Wayne. DeHart. And he had a prosthetic leg. Yeah. And, and just a, he had such an expressive face. And, and we did a lot of casting. We finally found him in Texas. He put a, a you know, through our casting associates down there and... Uh, when I saw his face, the thing I think I uttered was, oh, please be good. <laughs> yeah. I, I've had that too before. Yeah. You see the face comes up on the audition tape and you're like, oh, please be good. I said that so many times. Yeah. You, have a, you, have a good and, eye, you have a good eye for these faces. I always remember that from uh, the season where we introduced uh, the cousins. And there was that Mexican town, and you had all these great faces. Oh, man, and then, such good faces. We went past Look it. Look at that face. That's yeah, a great that's face. Fantastic. You love that. Well, oh, I love the old guy. There's a shot of the old guy in Saul's outer office in, in this episode, episode yeah. we had earlier. That was a great face. I there. almost didn't get him because I think uh, Michelle came by or something and said, uh, would it be bad if I took that guy and put him in my episode or something? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
no. Yeah. No, that's wow. true. No, that, 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 that came from yeah. me. No, okay, from you? that came from me because oh. I said, "Is it too late? <laughs> Could we use that guy as the guy who uh, is driving?" It's in the episode after this one, five yeah. five ten. Yeah. Uh, Could we use that as the guy, the old guy with the ear oh, flaps? Oh, you're right. right. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Thinking about we that. we because uh, we were casting apart. You're absolutely yeah. right, Brian. This My is- apologies. This was freaking cold this night. I yeah. visited the set with Michelle, and both of us wised up and said, let's go have dinner. I just remember, <laughs> this is way too cold. I just remember uh, Michael uh, running next to Michael, next to the uh, next to the car, yeah. trying to look at the, uh, trying, trying, to to, the trying to keep yes. an eye on the monitor. Trying to keep an eye on the monitor. And this was difficult, too, because we had to, I wanted a match. I wanted that the, the th- Chrysler 300 to arrive at the same time that, uh, that the car, the little radio control car, this shot. That's a great shot. Uh, and um, was was Matt Props operating Matt Props the car? Matt Props was yeah. on the car, yeah. yeah. And he, yeah. and I told him what I wanted to do, and he did it perfectly. And he did it, yeah. yeah. He's a, he was good at that yeah. remote control car. The and other that's thing a call back the with other, our remote control car in that cul-de-sac. Right. right. That's right. Well, we wanted to, uh, and it, it, it uh, ties this episode together with the next one. Another interesting makeup effect is uh, Dean Stubble. Because of course his his uh, his double grows during the episode, yeah, and it's all shot out of order, and so this was. Uh, Guys, you're still on the clock here. Let's go. Well, they, they, they did, they did an on? amazing job. Yeah, they, they did a really good they, job. They, when it's yeah, this great. little, like, they do it uh, hair by hair. They put it on and do they? little pieces. It's it's very time consuming. And then you got to make sure that this glue holding it on isn't shiny and yeah. all this minutia that goes into making well, these yeah. things. It's amazing. Or any, and to be honest, any TV show, any movie, to be honest. The amount of work. Yeah, that was something Tar Day really labored over. Yeah, yeah Tar did a great job. Mm, takes a lot to make it look easy. And I, yes. I just, you know, when when I read this, I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great for them to have this conversation and a boy is playing with a car in the background? <laughs> just this heavy foreground action and then a boy's toy. Well, I love the sound effect of the, uh, which uh, Nick Schuster, Schuest- uh, Nick Forshager, uh, our uh, wonderful uh, sound effects editor, came up with uh, for that because it really it adds to the tension here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really good. Hey, didn't you and Vince, you had considered bringing back the boy who had had yeah. operated we, the remote control car. We looked into it. I think it just for I think he couldn't work out at first. Well, he he, he was, was, doing, a uh, he was doing a movie. Yeah, yeah, he's he's quite a successful actor now. Good he yeah. was one of the stars of Super Eight. That's right. The GGA yeah. yeah, and we we almost got him. We almost worked out, and then I think we changed our schedule, and it just it just didn't work. He's a nice young man, though. He's, uh, There's anything good for him. He's having a great career. Yeah. Pretty sure him and Lacey talk sometimes. Mm-hmm. My, oh, little, yeah? my little sister, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, that's cool. Your sister's a cutie. Yeah, she's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be the death of me. I, you know, this is this is a moment, it's a little bit like uh, that moment when he decides to double back in the, at the end of the last act, and I just love it. Yeah. You're gonna Walt does. This mm. is one of the most tense moments when... when uh, <laughs> Leading the, coming up here when he closes the garage door. Mm. We we when we all got the script, we were so blown away and impressed that you, as the writers, decided to have this moment in the first episode Would never of the last day. Yeah. Because right. you could have taken the entire season right. for that to have yeah. this moment, yeah. Yeah. and this was awesome. And it was like you were at a at a starting line. You shot a gun off, yeah. and yeah. we just Boom. take off. And you running. shot one of the runners. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember reading this when the garage door goes down. I was just like, "Oh my god!" (laughs) (laughs) And this was an interesting scene to watch develop. You, uh, Brian, and and Dean figuring out how the physicality of it would work and how far you'd take Uh, it. Oh, Oh, it's just violent with shores. A good hit. I know. And the the thing that 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 Dean and I were were working on with Peter is that this is a scene about betrayal. He's not angry at me like he was angry at Jesse for what he pulled before and, and, and you know, wanted to kill him. Right. He's hurt here. Yeah. He's in deep, deep pain. Yeah. And that's why he's holding on. We figured this out. I said, what if you just held on to me and squeezed me like you wanted to crush me like a grape because your heart is breaking? You guys played this. Shit out of this Jeez. thing. Dean's awesome. Dean is awesome. <laughs> Both of you guys are awesome. Right. So, so proud of how this came yeah. out. Really great. It's beautiful. 
<laughs> really well done. And, you know, you made it uh, so physical and, 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 and tactile. Tactile. That's a good word. And, and, and when you banged into the garage door, you had to be careful not to bang in it too hard because you didn't want to pay for a new garage door, right? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that was a comment. That said, we can't hit it too hard. We did have to ask the owners. We they ask, minded. If, it was you know, so important that that kind of physical, that push mm -hmm. was so important that I... I was, well, God bless Fred that. and June who own the house. Yeah. They, they're very understanding. We actually had problems with the garage door in the next episode, but I'm not <laughs> saying it was related at all. <laughs> you mean the garage door got hurt? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that. No garage doors got hurt in the making of this episode. <laughs> and then the question arose, should you be bleeding this entire time? Because, you know, facial yeah. cuts yeah. bleed a lot, but it's like, nah, that's too much of a deal to mess with. No, you don't want to be thinking about how much blood is coming out and, and mess up all the good acting in here. And now he makes his appeal. Oh, this man. was so brilliantly written, right Peter. Car wash. Thank you. Well, it's God. I love the way it's played, it's and I love I love that he's making this argument. And you kind of I don't know when I when while you're while you're making the argument, I believe it. Yeah, there is no point. It, it There's no a, point to bringing this guy to justice. Yeah. It's a valid argument. It's it is a valid it's argument, valid. but. And, he he's too righteous of a man to bend. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. And then this, where there's that shift it's from so being great. That's great. that open vulnerability kind of drips away. So shut yeah. it down. And then you see a little Heisenberg come through, and it's mm -hmm. yeah, and such I, a great yeah, shift. That's nice. And what I love about this ending is that you're not saying that just as a threat. It's uh, you really don't want this to escalate. Yeah. This is the probably the Walter. best thing to do, yeah. Who I am. I would regret having to squash you like a bug. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Would be to tread lightly. Is this this episode is full of these long two handers. Yeah. And Walt said he's doing him a favor by telling him a yeah. warning it's him. It's a warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not a threat, it's a warning. It's yeah. <laughs> Great last shot. I love the slight little, little Just breeze a back. a little tiny. And we went back as far as we could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Kevin, Kevin Cordesco, yeah. our, our best fan ever. Uh, God bless him. He's uh, passed away this year. Good boy. Uh, good guy. Yeah. Good young guy, 16 years old, passed away from cancer. Mm. Who helped plant the seed of some things to come in the series. Well, the, right. the people have seen it now. The, the very fact Gretchen and Elliot come back in large part is due to, due to something Kevin said to me, that he wanted to know more about them. So, Great episode, uh, Brian. Great job. Great yeah, job. Awesome. Awesome. Great job, everybody. Great. Very Thanks, nice. everybody. Thanks, Peter. Very nice, guys.